big month. They might do 500K that month, a million that month, and they're calm for two days. Right. And then it's right back to, okay, how do I do more? How do I do more? How do I do more? And so the body is actually the state we want to live in the most. And when the mind's controlled, we can live through the body. And when we live in the body, and I think most men have had this experience, and you've probably had this experience when you're really calm and you're just able to sit in your body. And it's like, this slows down. Real estate, Real estate. Sales. sales, marketing, marketing. Full, circle Full Circle Conversations with Andres Olaya. Guys, welcome to another podcast. Today, I have a top, top guest with me. We're with Alan Howard, and Alan runs a coaching called The Path, and we're gonna be going through a lot of things, relationship, alpha male, women, men, society. Alan, thank you so much for coming on to Thanks, the podcast. Appreciate, appreciate it, appreciate Thanks it, Alan. Me. Yeah, yeah. So, right now, we're in Medellin, right? So, I want you to tell the people, how you discovered this beautiful city that we have behind us. Yeah, it's amazing. I feel I feel grateful being here. Like every time I'm here, I just feel the gratitude for being in a city like this. But the way I discovered it was actually not, it wasn't something I really wanted. I didn't really want to come here. I was traveling with a buddy and we lived in Buenos Aires and he told me, dude, let's go to Medellin. I keep hearing about it, I keep hearing about it. But at first I think I had a little bit of a preconception of what the place was like. And what was that? What was that preconception? Yeah, just, yeah. just like, it's dangerous. Maybe it's it's kind of trashy. It's a lot of drugs. It's a lot of prostitutes. Cartel. Like yeah. Cartel, all these things, right? Um, but for me, the first time I came, I, I, I fell in love with it. I just knew right away the weather, the temperature, um, the vibe of the people, how open and friendly they are, the culture of dancing, the food. It was just like this crazy mix of Afro-Colombian, Colombian coffee farm region, so many cultures all in one. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love that because you describe it very well. And like a lot of people have that same misconception, right? A lot of people, when they come here, it's like, is it dangerous? I'm going to get robbed. Yeah. Is there still drugs? And then the most infamous, right? Pablo Escobar yeah. and all that stuff. So every time they ask that, I tell them, yes, all those things. Don't come. <laughs> Don't come, man. <laughs> I mean, look, we're just talking off, off camera, right? Yeah. When you, because you, you came here, right? 2016. Yeah, first time. Yeah. And it's 2023 now, mm -hmm. right? So what is that? that uh, four or seven years later yeah. and it's like everyone knows about it right for sure for sure and, and it was so different then like the all the foreigners knew each other on a first name basis there right so few of them and so i think now we're experiencing the surge of people coming to medellin where it's like thousands upon thousands of tourists and so i joke around about that but it, it is kind of real it, it is still dangerous and i think people right. at some level should know that and so sometimes i do tell them yeah it is dangerous when they ask yeah i mean look you gotta you gotta look out anywhere you're really at right you yep. have to know how to behave properly right for sure you can't be walking around everywhere i mean you can get robbed anywhere right yes. and so you got to know people also like how to how to act yes. right when you come down here but talking about travel right because one of your things that you go over is adventure yes. right so you, it seems like you're world travel right buenos aires medellin you've yeah. been to a whole bunch of places right so what does that do to someone right mm. you know especially someone that's looking to expand your horizon, right? All these things you talk for sure. about. For sure. What does that do to somebody? Great question. I, I think uh, at, at the core, for me, what travel's done is it's made me face myself. Because when I go to a place, I'm showing up with no friends, not knowing anyone, new culture, new place. And every time it's like a, a sitting into myself. Right. It's me with me in this new place. And I have the opportunity to be whoever I want to be in that environment and from there you kind of you kind of discover new sides of yourself right it's scary showing up to a new country it's scary walking down a dark alley in a new place you've never been but for me travel's always been that at the deepest level it's been a way for me to step into adventure and i think at the core to a man the core to the masculine is adventure right if this was 500 600 years ago me and you instead right. of building businesses like we are we'd probably be hopping on a boat to go explore new lands and in travel, there's still an element of that, like that, that soul. When I go to a new place, I've never been, I don't speak the language. And so, yeah, travel has been a big part for me for the last uh, seven years, actually most of my life. I lived in Africa as a kid as well. Yeah, so. I, I love that. I mean, that's, that's such a unique way to, to talk about it. 
say that again because I want to make sure people actually get it because yep. that, 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 that touched me, right? I say that. What yeah, you yeah. So ultimately, I think travel for me has been uh, an opportunity for me to meet myself. To meet yourself. Yes. Travel is an opportunity to meet yourself because yes, you're in a different environment. Yes. And you know, you got to show up, right? You got to show up. All right, what skills do I have, right? T tell us about your... Uh, your expedition, right? Or yeah. the moment you live there and, yes. you know, with the indigenous people, because yeah. I thought that was amazing. So the, something that kind of consistently happens, I love we're talking about adventure, is I always find when I'm too stagnant in an area, when I've stayed too long in a place, it's like, I gotta go, I gotta get out. I gotta like, right. I gotta feed my soul in that way. And so one of the times I was here, the first time I was here, afterward, I was talking with my buddy and I had already created the five pillars of the masculine life. And at that time we were saying like, what do we want to do? How else do we want to feed the adventure pillar? And he asked me and I said, I want to go live in the fucking Amazon with a tribe. And he's like, what? Like, <laughs> it's crazy, right? There weren't YouTubers doing this at that time. And, and, and so he was like, yeah, yeah. okay. And, uh, and that was, that was what we did at the, at the beginning of 2017, we went and lived in the middle of the Amazon jungle with the tribe, um, of people that are still hunter gatherers at that time, they were still hunter gatherers getting most of their food from hunting or gathering. So it was a traditional way of life that you and I and our ancestors right. lived for millions of years. So yeah, what would you tell people that are watching, right? Because I'm gonna be honest, I was one of those people where I just like to stay in my comfort zone, so to say, mm. right? I didn't really like to travel, and as I travel, then I don't have all my things that I'm used to, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, my, my supplements, my my <laughs> bed, right? My, my cold bed. plunge. Yeah, my cold plunge, <laughs> my shower, yeah. uh, you know, all the things, right, that you like, yeah. my clothes, like, what am I gonna do? And then what did it for me was when I went to Paris. I don't know why mm. I happened to be there, you know, since maybe since I was so far away, like a different time zone, I had never been like on that different time, that did it for me, right? I was like, wow, that's amazing, right? I'm, yes. seeing, I'm seeing something that I seen on movies in yes. uh, TV shows on photos right yes. so I was like wow this is amazing but like what would you tell someone right to, to go out there to experience that adventure right like, uh, I love that what you're describing to me like as you're talking about your time in Paris it feels like a word that I love called travel magic travel magic travel magic yeah. and it's like the moment most people have this when they travel somewhere where the moment they're like wow I'm really here right, right? I'm really in Paris I've seen it in the movies and one of the first travel magic moments for me was when I was in Sweden. I lived in Sweden for a few months and I was on this river boat, this like old style boat. And I'm out on the front of the boat and there's a band playing like old fifties and sixties music. No one, I only knew two people on the whole party and I'm out there under the stars and the moon. I'm like, how am I here? Like yeah. a little kid from San Jose, like how am I here right now? And it was that moment of like, travel magic and i think people don't realize how much they get energetically from travel and how much it feeds your soul and who you are and it makes you understand the world so much bigger than our day-to-day -day problems and i think it's one of the biggest benefits of it too um so yeah i love that feeling yeah that travel magic man that's amazing yeah but you got you anybody watching you know they should go out there and experience that because that's exactly what i felt I'm like wow i'm yeah. the eiffel tower right I'm yeah like, I, i'm here right and it's like it's amazing, man. But how did you get started then as an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. Like how long have you been, been at this, right? Because yeah. you've been able to travel. Yeah. We're gonna talk about, you know, some, some business that you sold and things like that. But for like, sure. how, how did it start for you, right? You, you grew up in San Jose, so yeah. what was your progression like? Well, I was kind of always an entrepreneur. Like when I was younger, I remember I'd wake up at five in the morning and go steal all my neighbors recycling and then store up this big thing of recycling <laughs> in my garage and then go and sell. And that was yeah. like, I would, I'd get up, my buddy who was two years older, I'd knock on his window at five in the morning, we'd go do this thing to try and make money. So I was always right. trying to find ways to make money. Um, and then that led into selling um, chocolates that were expired by two years. Oh my, my sister gosh. and I went and sold those door to door. <laughs> so it was the second business. <laughs> um, but my dad was always kind of a, um, he was an entrepreneur who never really made it. And there's right. a lot of entrepreneurs who kind of never really really get out and find the peace, right? Because a lot of entrepreneurship is the battle and the struggle. And so he was constantly in that, but never got to the level that we were talking about earlier of like right. a little more peace. I got a team running things. And so through high school and middle school, that was so difficult to be in a household with that amount of stress and right, right, right. lack of success that I actually, it was the last thing I wanted to be was an entrepreneur. And so in the middle of college, I was paying my way through college. My parents didn't have money to support. I was working a bunch of jobs and I just wanted an office job. 
for me, that was like my golden ticket. That was the NFL for me is like a steady paying office job. And so, um, I got the office job at one point. I worked there for six years because I was too scared to leave. I was too scared to go out. My soul was craving travel magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was craving entrepreneurship. What were um, you doing at that office? I I was doing uh, like a digital marketing, SEO stuff. Okay, okay. okay. And so I was able to convince him to let me move to Europe. Lived in Europe for two years doing that. But I just knew there was more I wanted to do, but I didn't have the confidence to do it. I didn't believe, because I saw the example of my father, I didn't believe that I could have success as an entrepreneur. And so I was pretty resistant to it until finally, after six years of sending an office job, I said, I don't give a, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no yeah. matter what, I'm gonna fi- figure out how to make this work. And so in 2014, um, I left, or 2016 actually, I left, uh, excuse me, 2015, I left my office job to travel the world and start building businesses. That's where the journey started. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, man. Sometimes you're, you're, up, you're, you're up against the wall, man, and you just have to, take the leap man yes. and that, that, nothing happens like we've all been there and it's like you know even even with stuff today right like i'm sure we have all that stuff going on where it's yeah. like we're more scared like it's just the perception of like what's gonna happen and it happens and yes. you can live with it right yeah. it's like it's, it's, it's nothing happens my my guess at that at that moment was that six months later i was probably gonna be sleeping on my parents couch right like that's really what i thought because i thought i don't know how i'm gonna figure this out I don't feel I'm entrepreneurial. And so there's a good chance that six months later, I'm going from a six figure a year job in an office to sleeping on my parents' couch. Yeah. But I was, I got to the point where I was willing to take that risk. Yeah. You have to take the risk yep. because if you don't, I mean, no, one, no one's going to take the risk for you. That's the thing. Like yeah. people, you can go and talk to everybody and tell you what they want to feel. And then most people go and talk to people who they're comfortable with, right? Yes. We're just going to tell them something and it's going to make them feel good. But you have to be hard on yourself, right? You have to be hard on yourself, which comes to my next thing here because you work with a lot of people, right? One-on-one, you do coaching, right? And you help transform people's lives. So what was it like before you became who you are today, right? Helping people and you know, you do, I'm sure the feedback you get for the people, you you affect people's lives, right? You change their trajectory of where they're going to something different, right? So what was that like before and what inspired you, right? Like what what, what clicked on you was like, man, this is is my calling. Mm, Love that. It was kind of always the thing I did even before I did it. And so it was just a natural part of my personality. I was always just helping the guys around me, my friends, yeah. always wanting to lead groups to get better and improve in self de- self development. And so that was kind of always the journey for for me. And what I realized in my companies is actually all I wanted to do in my companies was help develop my employees. Right. And so it was like the other business side I wasn't as interested in. It was more like, I just want you to like personally be more content, more fulfilled, more happy, more purposeful. I want you to go explore your passion. So it was kind of the thing I was always doing. Um, And something that's kind of switched for me at at one point is that I look at the internet today with all the content and podcasts and videos and YouTube videos, all the information's out there. Right. Right. The how to's out there. You can learn how to invest from Warren Buffett. You can learn how to build businesses from Alex Ramosi. You can learn habits from James Clear, but a lot of the results aren't out there. And so the thing that I started to understand is it's less about the information and it's more about people overcoming themselves. I love that. And when people can conquer themselves, they can conquer the world. And so a lot of the work I do, it's more about helping people understand what is actually really blocking them. And for most people, 99% of the time, it's some traumatic right. stored beliefs that they have about who they are and how they show up in the world. And the moment they overcome that, business changes, relationship changes, everything changes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's deep, man. I mean, it's just, it's true. Like, what do they have to overcome? Yes. And it's, it's like you said, it's usually themselves. Yes. Because unless you take that step, like... It's just you're stuck in the same place, right? You're stuck in the exact same place. And it's just like, what do they say? False events appearing real? Yes. And it's, it's, it's technically that, man. It's the fear of things, right? So talk to me about the path, right? Because I love that name. You're helping typically men, yes. right? Yeah. Men, are you yeah, working with moment. any women? Yeah, at the moment, no. Okay, yeah, man. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, good. Um, you know, there's a lot of coaches out there, right? But what, what sets you apart here with the path? Yeah. Because we're talking offline, right? I really connected to stuff. Yeah. 
and you're just straight to the point yep. and you're very analytical mm -hmm. and you break down different scenarios, right? I love your reaction videos. Yes. And, you know, but what sets you apart here, like yeah. from, from everybody else, right? Because, you know, there's a more people doing it. For sure. There's a lot of people. And, and when I decided to get into coaching after I sold my last business, yeah. I didn't realize how I just didn't analyze the market. Right. It just kind of happened naturally. Um, and I didn't realize how many people are in it. And um, for me, you know, the I think the take I have, and this might sound really weird, but so much of coaching for me is actually my ability to just connect to a deeper power. The ability to connect to my intuition. Right. And that oftentimes is what's guiding me in coaching. And the more that I'm in my head thinking about the three-step process or whatever else with people, um, the less results I'm going to get for them. And so for me, it's, it's really tapping into deeper intuition. And I know that right. sounds weird for a lot of people, probably a lot of analytical right. business people that might listen to this, but that's actually the way to help people get out of their own way because everyone actually knows the path. Everyone actually knows their own path but they're just blocked by it. And so it's less about giving them a secret formula. I don't have a secret formula for right, them. Right, right. It's more about helping them understand and connect to themselves. And the more I can help them do that, the more the path is clear for them. And so when I say the path, what it really means is your path, your path, your path into yourself. And that's what people need to find because when you're in alignment with heart, soul, mind, body, all of that, it's clear what you need to do. So I don't know if that answered the question. But no, it definitely did, yeah. man. That's deep, man. That's 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 what it's about, right? You genuinely, I feel like you can feel people. Yeah. I feel like just your luck, you can feel what the other person is feeling. Yes. And what they need to hear, man. Because I, at the end of the day, that's what a coach is. Like mm -hmm. it's someone analyzing you, taking your everything that's going on in your life into account, and being like, hey, you know you're giving them like a hundred or 200 foot vision of like what's actually going on. Yes. So that makes sense, man. That, that That's good. So from that path, right, you talk about your pillars, right? Mm -hmm. It's five of them, right? Yes. So it's mind, body, yep. mission, mm -hmm. relationship, and then we spoke about adventure. Yes. So explain to me the key components, right, of, of just briefly Let's start with mind. Yes. Right. So what does that mean to you? Like right, when, when the word mind comes to you, what do you yeah. mean? Right. Yeah. When you're coaching someone. Yeah. Ultimately, that's mindset. So mindset. that comes to beliefs. Like, what do you believe about yourself? One of the things that most entrepreneurs believe is like one day I'm going to feel a certain way. When I get to six figures a month, I'm going to feel a certain way. Right. When I have a team of 50 people, I'm going to feel a certain way. But that is all an illusion and not reality because the way you felt at 10 K a month is how you're going to feel at 2 million a month. Right. If right, you don't right, change right. the mindset. And so everything starts with mindset and mindset's really about relationship with self and how we speak to self inner coach. And so when I think of mind, it's that it's what am I telling myself all day long? What is the voice in my head playing all day long? And if I can change that voice to actually push me forward and lift me up, it changes my life. So we have to start there at the mind first. At the mind, absolutely, I agree because we're talking about the the law of attraction. I yep. mean, I personally believe in it, right? Your mm -hmm. thoughts are like a physical matter. Yes. So if you're putting in junk, if you're negative about yourself, or you're taking in a whole bunch of stuff, right? Like people, it's just like it amazes me, right? Like, for example, like they have time to go to the gym, but they won't. These people won't ever put an audio book or a yes. podcast or something, but they'll put like, you know, all these rappers or all these music. They're just talking about drugs and just all the wrong things. For you know sure. what I mean? So For I agree sure. with that. Next is body, yep. right? So where do you see that? Yeah. Body is, is also another form of connection with self. So for me, body is intuition. It's the ability intuition. to feel what you should do. It's really your compass. And so when we're connected to our body, we're connected to our deepest self, right? So many entrepreneurs today, they're all mind. And actually they're so all mind that their mind controls their life to the point where they're always anxious. Right. They might close, they might have a big month. They might do 500 K that month, a million that month. And they're calm for two days. Right. And then it's right back to, okay, how do I do more? How do I do more? How do I do more? And so the body is actually the state we want to live in the most. And when the mind's controlled, we can live through the body. 
And when we live in the body, and I think most men have had this experience, and you probably have this experience when you're really calm and you're just able to sit in your body. And it's like, this slows down and you're chill. And so when you're connected to your body, you know when your body needs to be pushed harder. Yeah. You know when it needs to go to the gym. You know when you need to let that primal energy out. And so a lot of, I would say the most successful guys I see, happiness as well as success too, they know how to transition their life from living in their head to living more in their body. It's the best sex you'll have. It's the best meditation you'll have. It's the best workout you'll have when you are embodied. And so yeah. that's what body means for me. So how do I get to that point where I'm living through the body? How do I get to that? You, point? you have to first calm the mind. You have to calm the mind. You have first. to calm the mind because the mind's constantly going. Yeah. It's get, you're going to live here. And most of us Westerners, especially we live here. Right. And so as we start to transition to living more in the body, it's a changing our awareness into the belly. And when we start to live more through the belly, we have a different energy that comes out. It's a different primal energy. It's more aggressive. It's more um, masculine. It's more like taking. And so the connection with the belly starts by speaking your truth and by being courageous in your actions. The more we hide who we truly are, the right. more disconnected we are from our body. The more we live in our body, it even changes the way we sound in our voice, right? If I'm talking like this, it's because yeah. I'm nervous. <laughs> but if I'm sitting more in my belly, it's because yeah. I know who I am. And I know who I am because I speak my truth. I own who I am. I show up that way. And so that is the first process. There's a lot more tools and techniques to get in the body. Right. But a lot of it is slowing down and calming the anxious mind, which is full of beliefs. Like if I don't hustle, right, I'm going to be on right, the street right. again. And a lot of entrepreneurs feel that. So I call it the ghost of poverty. They're always running from poverty. I have clients who make $2 million a month and they act like next week they'll be on the street if they don't close enough deals this week. Right, 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 right. And it's no way to live. That makes sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Calming the mind first, mm -hmm. then living can, through the body. And then you can live through the body. I feel that. I personally feel that, you know, when I'm connected to God, right? When I'm like, okay, I, I, I'm meditating and I have God in my thoughts and my prayers. So I, I, I know what you mean because my body changes. My body feels different. Yes. But uh, that makes sense. Mission. Okay. Are we talking Mission Impossible or what? <laughs> <laughs> exactly what we're talking Tom Cruise Tom, Tom Cruise, Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah mission mission and business are kind of one in the same and yeah. so um, for me I think you you have to start first with calming the mind you have to start with living through the body and then you right. start to focus on mission and what I find is when you tend to be connected to your body you have better clarity on what your mission is and so there's a transition from just making money to like I'm here for a bigger purpose I'm here to do something that my soul wants me to do. There's a calling in me. There's a medicine in me that I'm supposed to give to this world. And that's the mission. And I think when men find that, and when men actually step into that, it completely changes the way they, they operate in life and the, the happiness and joy they have in life as well. And something that I often like to think about is, have you heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs? I have, yes. Yeah. yeah. So most people have heard his pillar, right? It's like, you need your psychological and safety right. needs. And then eventually you get up to like, you get up to um, self-actualization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like a very high yeah. level. It's like, I'm, I'm self-improvement. I'm becoming my best self. But there's one stage higher that most people don't know that he discovered before he died. And he changed his pyramid, but most people only see the other one. Okay. And it was self-transcendence. Self-transcendence, okay. And so have you seen the movie the Gladiator or Braveheart before? I have, yes, 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 yes. So he looked at people through history and he said like, why is Martin Luther King willing to die for his beliefs? Right, why is he willing to die? That's, that's bigger than self-actualization. Yeah. Why is William Wallace willing to be killed for his beliefs? Because he's transcended self. And so what he found is the highest state for a human being is when you transcend self, you are willing to die for your mission and for something bigger. And there's a, there's something that the masculine soul loves and is addicted to that, right? We love the gladiator. We love right. uh, Braveheart because that's what we're here to do in my opinion. And I help, I love helping guys find that thing for them. That, right. that thing where it's like, I'm willing to die right now for the thing I'm doing. That's strong, man. That's yeah. deep. Yeah, I mean, because if, if you're willing to die something, there's not anything else you're not willing to do. Yes. Next is relationship. Yep. Okay, so this is what 
I've seen you post a lot on, right? Yeah. But there's so much more here to it and it makes sense. Yep. Because we'll get into that later, right? How can you be in a relationship or have a successful relationship if you haven't taken care of, of mind, body, yep. and mission, right? Yes. So next is relationship. So what does that encompass? Yeah, I love it. A lot of guys mess this up. A lot of guys go mind, body, and then they go relationship, and then their <laughs> mission, right? And then they're too fo they're too focused on their girl, right? Yeah. You see this a lot, and so the order is important. I hey, love don't that be here. saying girl, man. Yeah, 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 woman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't be partner. saying partner. Yeah, okay. partner. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But the relationship is so key. And you know what's funny is actually yeah. this is this is the pillar for me that's been the most difficult and the one I've had to develop myself in the most. And the relationship is not only relationships with friends, but also right. romantic relationships too. And so that pillar comes after you've you filled your own cup. And a lot of people make this mistake, right? A lot of people want to give from an empty cup. Right. My mindset's not good, my body's not good, like I'm in scarcity. I'm struggling through life. Let me get a girl. And then that's a toxic relationship. Yeah. Or let me lean on other people. And so, so much of this process is building those steps to then get to the relationship pillar and then say, okay, I'm going all in on this now. I have my other things worked out. I'm going in on this. Yeah. So have mind, body, mission, then relationship. Yes. Because you can't get from an empty cup. It's yes. true. It's 100%. And then lastly, adventure, right? We, we went over this here in the beginning, yeah. but touch base on that again, right? Cause adventure, because I think that's important. I know for me, when I started to experience adventure, again, I was someone that just, I liked my comfort zone, yeah. right? I got everything, you know, why would I, why would I go and like <laughs> not have my things and yeah. I don't know the language and like the airports and for the long sure, flights, yeah, but sure. talk to us about where that fits in yeah. with the pillars. I think um, it makes life not be stale. A lot of guys, a lot of entrepreneurs, they can get bored over time because they, they get in a, a, a momentum of like goals, KPIs, um, objectives, and like you got to reset. And the reset is the adventure. If this was, yeah. you know, a couple hundred years ago, we'd be getting our axes together and going over the mountain and taking out the next tribe. That was like our adventure. And so men need that. It's, it speaks to our soul. We have to incorporate that into our life. And so that's part of it. It gives you that spice for life, that love for life, right, right. that connection to life. Yeah, because a lot of people talk about burnout and things like that, but yep. maybe they don't have enough adventure that's it. in their life, right? Um, or that's, you know, some women say that, you know, I left him because yeah, he, he was boring, right? And <laughs> I didn't have adventure. Yeah. So you're big on belief and selective focus, yes. right? What are some technical things that you can do to hone in? You know, whether it be meditation, is it the cold plunge, connecting mm -hmm. with nature? What are some things? Because I thought that was brilliant, right? That you, that you talk about that yes. selective focus. Yeah. And from there stems your belief, right? For sure. Yeah. Well, one of the things I found early in coaching is that um, people often are delusional and they're delusional in a negative way. So like a guy would have a belief that like women only care about money as an example. And right. there are a lot of women who only care about money, but there are a lot who don't as well. And so he would see the world through that lens. Well, one question there before yeah. we move on. Yeah, yeah. Is that true though? Are there some women that don't care about money? I mean, in your experience. Yes. Because right? I, I feel like, look, yes, but they all, they in some regards, right, right, it goes back to the primal thing, yes. right? Is this guy gonna be able to provide for my family, yes. my survival and things like that? So you, so you think, at some level, do they all care about money or there's some that don't? Like what's your take on there, that? There's a level of money they all care about okay. and that's safety and security. Safety and security. But there's a lot of women who would choose to be with a construction worker rather than an NFL, NFL player because of how they feel around him. That's true. And I actually have an example of that. One of my buddies in the States, he lives in the city, he's a construction worker and his girl, gorgeous, is constantly hit up by NFL players in that city and has no interest because she loves him and knows who he is like feels good with him. That's a great woman. It is a great That's woman. A great woman. <laughs> and there's a lot of women who are like that when the right. man holds the right frame. Um, but to go back to your earlier question, yeah. what happens is we start to see the world through our own view and then we build evidence. So if you've ever seen the matrix, right, you see all that code that goes right. down. It's like the more I view the world through a certain lens, the more I'm seeking evidence constantly to reconfirm my own belief because our brains are a belief creation machine and a belief reconfirmation machine. So if I believe women only care about money, every time I see an example of women only wanting money in a man, I will remember that. 
So now I've just added to that belief. I've strengthened that belief. And so the best way to actually change your focus and to change your belief is by doing what I call RAS journaling. journaling. Your RAS is your reticular activation system. So if I were to say, hey, Andres, look around the room right now. Tell me everything you see that is white. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, focus on things that are white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What in this room was orange? Don't look, don't look. Nothing. Nothing. You don't know. Yeah, yeah. Because you're only looking at one thing. You have a selected focus. And so the same thing happens when we have a belief. If I believe this to be true, if I believe women don't want short guys, which used to be a, a belief of mine, I would always look for evidence to show that women don't want a guy that's short. But I'm short now. And I've been with a lot of beautiful women because I changed the belief. I changed the belief. And so a way that you do this, it's called RAS journaling, is you journal two or three times a day on the new belief, belief you're creating. So I'm creating new evidence. I'm changing my selective focus on what I focus on to be on the new belief. So if my belief is that I'm disorganized, I'm gonna journal two or three times a day and I'm gonna say, how did I show up as an organized person today? And I'm gonna think about it and say, oh, you know, I made my bed. Okay, I made my bed. Oh, I organized stuff at work. Okay, I organized stuff at work. And the more I start to do that, the more I'm changing my selected focus to be on the new belief. And then what will happen two to three to four to five to six weeks down the road is I'll start to see all the evidence for my new belief. Oh, damn, that's how I'm organized. Oh, damn, that's how I'm this way. Because I'm no longer reconfirming all day long the beliefs that I hold. Does that make sense? That makes complete sense. And I, honestly, I've never had anybody break it down that way, right? Yep. ARS journaling. Yes. To change your beliefs. Yes. So the exercise there is to look at your belief, mm -hmm. your current belief that you have, and how you want to change it? Yes. Is that right to summarize? Yeah, so look at your current belief you have today. What is the opposite of that belief? And then start to journal on the evidence you have that is the opposite of that. Right. So start to find the evidence until, and it'll take time, but your reticular activation system, which you just had around this room, your selected focus, right. will change as you start to give it the right information. You're essentially giving the opposite that it's gotten its entire lifetime of being with you, that belief. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, that makes complete sense. Yep. Like I said, I, you must be from the future because I've never heard that, man. <laughs> I'm gonna go back and watch this, man. <laughs> And does that, do you do meditation also? Yes. Is that Would that help, right, with mm -hmm. those sort of things, right? You do mm -hmm. meditation, you recommend yeah. that, okay. Meditation, the, when it comes to belief change, the reason why meditation is so powerful is we start to see our own emotional connection. Like, oh, why am I feeling this? Or why am I believing this? There's like a pause between the reaction time that we normally have in certain things. And so that pause allows us to better analyze and understand what's really going on here to understand how that's affecting the greater world because ultimately our internal world just creates a reflection outwardly. The people around us, the money we make, the life we have is a reflection of what we believe. And so that meditation allows you to, to pinpoint what this emotion is making me feel? Yes. So nowadays it's gotten very popular, right? The term alpha male, right? And it sounds cool, it sounds really cool, right? That's a cool word, alpha, and then you throw male on it, right? You think of someone like strong and confident. And then on the flip side, you also have masculine toxicity, right? So what are those terms? Like when, when people are throwing these things out because one seems to good, be good, and then one seems to be bad, and then they seem to cross lines here, so. What, what's this all about? Uh, I love it, great question, it's so funny. Um, well, I think for me, we see on the internet, right, the, the modern day alpha male we see on the internet is, is kind of the Andrew Tate guy, or it's, or it's the Dan Bilzerian. It's like the girls, the yacht, the, the cars, the cigars, all of that. Um, the big muscles, maybe the steroids, yeah, you know, yeah. whatever it might be. <laughs> um, but I think for me, what, what an alpha male is ultimately is a guy who just lives based on his own standard. Like he, he knows who he is, he knows where he's going and he knows what he wants and he operates from that standard. Those three questions right there. Knows who he is, knows where he's going, knows what he wants and he doesn't put up with bullshit. Right. Like that is the alpha male. And so that guy can be the leader of a company or that guy can be a solo entrepreneur. I think it's a man that really truly lives his truth. 
And, and I think that's, the alpha male is not, there's a lot of miserable, and you know this being in business, there's a lot of miserable guys who make a lot of money who have a lot of nice cars. And they're not alpha. I mean, dude, we can talk about so many things. Like people, guys making money and making terrible decisions. Yes. Right? It's like, I mean, the stories you hear, right? Right, right. I just one, one came to mind recently, Ben. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of guys successful with money. Yes. Just making terrible decisions, right? That doesn't, money doesn't make you alpha. No. Big muscles doesn't make no. you alpha. Even having, I would say, even a lot of women, right? Yes. Doesn't even make you alpha, really, sure. right? Because these, these guys get uh controlled and bullied by some of these women right completely and they get used as well so none completely. of that stuff makes you alpha i love your definition about yeah yeah so i think that's that's accurate yes and i think it's a it's a changing of the definition now like this this idea because what's happening is ultimately someone who's alpha is leading his own life to his own truth Right. But now, because guys like Dan Bilzerian or Andrew Tate, they've created a, a version of an alpha male, mm -hmm. you see a lot of alpha sheeps, which are actually just beta males. Yeah. It's dudes following, thinking, if I get the Rolex and I get the Bugatti, then I'm then I'm alpha. Right. But it's like, no, you're just a you're you're playing a part that someone else has created, which is the complete opposite of being an alpha. You're just being a follower. And so I, I love that it's being talked about today. I think at the core of some of those guys' messages, like Andrew Tate has some really good messages. It's about like becoming a stronger man, right. going for what you want, going for your goals. Those are all amazing components and components of an alpha, but it's not a certain look. It's not a certain amount of money. It's not a certain type of fucking car right, right. or big muscles. It's about being a man who knows who he is. I've been around yogis, like tiny little yoga guys right, right. that I'm in their presence and I feel insecure. And he might make 1200 bucks a month. He, I might be able to break him in half if I fought him. I'd probably get more girls than him. All those things, but when I'm in his presence, I feel like, wow, I'm not even close to the man this guy is. Because he knows who he is and he's so comfortable with that man. Yeah, what do those yogis do? They're, uh... I, think, I think it's alignment. Right. At the end of the day, he knows who he is and he knows what he wants and he's doing it. Right. Because courage, and we talked about this earlier when it came right. to entrepreneurship, it was like, it's such a big part of life, but to really live authentically and to go for what you want and to be that man each and every day, that just raises your confidence to a different level. Like he doesn't need the nice house. He doesn't need the attractive girl. He doesn't need the business success because he's walking his path and knows who he is. So alignment yeah I think. yeah absolutely yeah he's, he's that that courage that confidence yes. that knowingness no hesitation that right that. they're not hesitating yes. he's right into it right because yes. he knows he's done it so many times as a professional and it's like he can't mess up for sure so people are gonna follow his leadership right yeah. and on the flip side right the the toxic masculinity right because like you said all these guys want to be beta and yeah. excuse me um alpha and then they turn up they end up being beta right mm. so what's that you right because everybody's throwing that out you see that all over talks and this yeah. you know it has to do with the tates and all that yes. right but i i like their message right sure. i like their message but but it gets okay it's toxic yes so wh where do you draw the line? Where, where does that start? I mean, what even, what is that? Yeah. Like, I don't even know what that is. Like, I genuinely don't wanna know what you think. I think it's a programming to keep men um, away from being manly. I think it's a program purposely put out in society to make men scared to do things that are masculine. And it's a way to control men because if men are scared to be assertive, if men are scared to put boundaries in a relationship, then men are going to be weak. And so toxic masculinity is a way that society has created to level the playing field between men and women. So men don't show up more masculine. They're kind of scared to and almost shamed to be, being masculine to make men and women more equal in a way. But equal equality is not what men and women want. They want right. equity and equity is different. They want the, the opportunity to be equal, but they don't want to be the same, which is equality. And so toxic masculinity right now, it's, it's a way that society thinks it's good to make men and women equal, but men and women don't want to be equal. Women don't want to be equal to their partner. Every girl, when you ask her, it's like, what kind of man do you want? How tall do you want him? Oh, as tall as me or taller. How much money do you want to make? As much money as me or more. But what they're really saying is more. Right. They don't want equality, yeah. but they want equity. They want the ability to have equal opportunity 
which is not equality. So I think it's a way that societies use to make men and women the same, which keeps them in conflict, which makes the power that be have better control of society. And I think ultimately toxic masculinity, for the most part, it's bullshit. There are controlling insecure men, but real masculine men are not that way because they know who they are, they know where they're going and they know what they want. They don't have to control women. That's, right. that's weak behavior. Absolutely. That's fear-based behavior. Yeah, yeah and that term, I, I feel like it's relatively new. Yes. Right? That term, I, I had never heard of that term, right? Well, let's talk about relationships, right? Let's get into relationships because relationships are difficult to maintain, right? Yep. It, and I don't think it's just a specific part of the world, not just the U.S., not just Colombia. It's like everywhere, right? Yep. But according to the American Psychological Association, approximately 40 to 50 percent of the first marriages end in divorce. Well. And then the second marriage, there's a 60 to 67 percent chance approximately that it's going to end in divorce as well. Right. And that may be true because, you know, my mom's been married three times. <laughs> my She's dad, my I dad, it. I don't even know how many either. Right. Right. Yeah. Right around that same number. Yeah. So it's not easy. Right. For We're, sure. Just be honest here. It's not easy. For sure. But. It's a very open-ended question, but why are relationships so hard, right? You've been in relationships, you've seen people in relationships, you've coached people in relationships. Yes. And I feel like you're always in a relationship with yourself as well. For sure. So why is it so difficult here? Mm. I think part of it is because there's not teaching from older men to younger men on how to show up in relationship. Like the real secrets of maintaining a good relationship with a woman, men don't share. Like men know when they're 30 years into marriage, yeah. like you don't put up with her, like you just ignore her emotional stuff, whatever she says, she doesn't really mean, she's just trying to get a reaction out of you. Like all these things that they don't teach younger men. So I think there's an issue in the house. And I think the other deeper issue is that um, men are treating women like men and not like women and they're expecting it to be fair in the house. I did this, so you do that. Uh, I make this amount of money, so you make that amount of money. Again, the equality thing, rather than the equity right. thing, excuse me. And so I think that creates some of the problems is like most men don't want, know what it really means to show up as a masculine leader in relationship. And if I were to actually talk about what it means to show up as a masculine leader in relationship, I would be canceled immediately because what women say they want and what w women really want are completely different things. And the behavior that women really respond to is behavior that without a doubt would be considered highly toxic masculinity, but it's what they really want in a relationship. And older men don't tell us about these secrets. So that's my belief. I think that's, yeah, I think that's so key right there, right? Because if, more people experience, right, with relationships. They sit down with you, right? Yep. When you're younger, they don't teach this stuff at school. For sure. Like they're not, they're, they're, they're putting the, uh, the flags and the rainbows and, you know, talking about different genders and you can change your gender, but there's no, there was no, for me at least, right? I don't know about you. Yes. There was no class on like, okay, this is how marriage works. Yes. This These, is how you have good relationships. There's nothing about that. There were zero. Yep. Zero. I'm not even like college, right? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't go to college for long, but, yes. I but there was nothing. Um, or even, you know, even realistically, even at church, right? Some yes. of the churches I went to, right? I didn't go to a whole bunch of churches, but there was now we're like, okay, here's this workshop or yes. here's this class or here's this guest speaker. Never, never. So I think that's key. You know, I've never, yeah. I never thought about it that way, but yeah, I mean, yeah. That's a, someone who's successful at a marriage. And like I said, I mean, for me, it was difficult because, you know, I told you about my parents, yeah. but yeah, it's hard when you see that as the example. Yeah. It's like, you know, how much do I trust in it? And then also how do I do it? Well, there's, there's not a lot, there's not a lot of clear, clear, uh, instructions on that. Yeah. So talking about this, all right, in your experience, right, let's start here. In working with men, what do men really want in a relationship mm. from their woman? Yep. The, the deepest thing is respect and affection. So it's like she, he wants to be respected. And like what he says, she listens to his reverence and admiration for him. She admires the man he is. And then he wants affection. Because most men never hear good things about themselves. They don't say good things about themselves in their head. Right. They're around their buddies. Their buddies are just talking about where they can be better. Like, 
that is the place he goes to recharge and receive that beautiful, affectionate, loving, feminine energy. So I think it's respect and it's affection at the core. That's what men want from women. And a lot of women today get that wrong. They think men want other women who are like successful or who are funny and witty. Like that's, it's cool to have a good sense of humor, but at the end of the day, especially for an entrepreneur, he just wants a girl who can really understand him, respect him, listen to what he says and give him love and affection. And those things melt a man. Absolutely. And no, I agree with you spot on, right? Cause like you say, a lot of women think, I guess it's changed, right? You know, a lot of women know they think they gotta be successful, corporate job, this, that. But I agree with you 100%. Yep. Like from what I would want from a woman is that. Exactly yep. what you just described, right? And, and that, and I would say loyalty as well, right? Yeah. Being there, Being support, true. the support also, sure. right? The support, like anything, you know, let's say you're really with someone long-term and like you tell them, hey, I need your support in this or yeah. let's work together on this, right? Just be in unity as well. Yeah. I think that's key. Right, ride or die. Ride or die. Mo most men really, that's what we want at the yes. core. We want a girl that we know is ride or die. It's it's the Bonnie and Clyde. It's like, no matter what happens, you're going to be there on my, you're going to be there with me. You're going to be there by my side. Like men want that. They want to know they're in the trenches with a girl who's there no matter what. A hundred percent. And, and the, um, I actually forgot. We can cut that part. Um, now, from on the opposite spectrum, right? Because I was I was looking at one of your videos, right? That you reacted to. I don't know who the guy was. It seemed like he's on a talk show. Okay. Right. But what do women? Not what they think they want. Yeah. Not what they think society wants, tells them what they want to want, but what do they really want? Yes. Because it's completely different. It's completely <laughs> different, right? Those are three different things. Yeah. So what do they really want? Yeah. In, re in relationship, in an actual relationship, they want, they want to know that they're safe at the core. Like this guy, he really is looking out for me. He really has my best interests. And they want a guy who's strong enough to put them in their place. They deeply want that because that creates the safety. And so they want to know that I can act up. I can be as crazy as I want to be, but he can handle it. And guys that can't, they fall in the energy with the woman and they're emotional with her and they're, they're, oh my gosh, baby, don't say that. And that creates that lack of safety. And so she really wants a man who can look at her, listen to all her bullshit, take all her bullshit and say, you'll be fine. Right. He just pierces through it. She wants that in relationship. Right. Before relationship, she wants adventure. She wants mystery. She wants a guy who she feels a little scared of. Like, like why do women love 50 shades of gray? It's a wealthy, successful guy who's taking complete control of her. She has no control over what they're doing and she doesn't know if he's gonna hurt her or not. <laughs> it creates this massive yeah. attraction, but if you think of it from a biological level, right? Some women might hear this and they'll be, they'll be like triggered by this, but from a biological level, women want the guy who's a fucking conqueror. Right. They want the guy who's like, this guy has the ability to kill me and other people around, but he's not gonna do it. He has the ability to take control. He has the ability to not be moved by my emotional fights that I throw at him. One thing I always say to guys is like, you gotta be the lighthouse in the storm. When men really care about a woman, they think they need to be in the rowboat, right? What happens in a storm in the ocean? When there's a storm in the ocean, the woman is like the ocean. The guy thinks, oh, I gotta, I gotta hop down there with her. Right. I gotta join her in this. I gotta show I care. So he hops in the little rowboat and then he's getting his ass kicked. But like guys have to be the, the lighthouse. What happens in a storm? It doesn't fucking matter. It's not moving. Right, right, it's not. It can't be moved. And the more a woman can feel that, the more she feels deeply safe with that guy. So it's a guy that can put her in her place, tell her not these actual words, but tell her energetically when she needs to, to shut the fuck up. Right. Energetically, not those words, like maybe sometimes yeah, yeah. <laughs> no no seriously yeah i get what you mean yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and then and then the energy to just hold it down right like that's what she wants and when she knows she's with a guy that can't be fucked with the amount of attraction that develops just shoots up i'm gonna tell you a quick story when i moved to to rio back at, at the end of 2020 i was briefly on the apps 
just to see what the girls look like there. I don't like to go on dating apps. And I saw this absolute stunner of a, of a girl. It was just like one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen on the apps. And her and I started texting, but she was taking a couple days to respond, probably had a ton of guys flooding in, all that, right? And I said, hey, let's go get drinks one time. Ghost me, doesn't respond. Next week, I'm like, hey, let's go get drinks. And she goes, um, she goes, maybe. I said, let's go get drinks this Thursday at seven. She said, maybe. I said, I don't do maybes. Let me know if you can make it on Thursday at seven or let's say it wasn't meant to be. Like I wasn't gonna put up with the energy, right? Like right. I don't do maybes. We're gonna do it or we're not gonna do it. And she goes, wow, I like this energy. Okay, I'm free. But it's that, it's they want the guy who's like, no, I'm not gonna put up with your princess bullshit. No, I'm not gonna put up with this energy. Like this is what we're doing. And when they feel that, it, it stands out because most guys won't do that, especially not to the most attractive women. Most guys are terrified to be that way. A hundred percent. That's a powerful story. Yep. Touch and base there on those apps, right? I, you know, I'm not on them, so I can't, yep. I can't really, uh, and I've never really been on them, right? I can't really, I don't have too much context though. For sure. But what are your thoughts on the apps? You like them, you don't like them, right? Because they're popular yeah. all over the place. There's like, it seems like there's a new app every yep. three months or something like that. For sure, there's a lot of them. Yeah. I think they're horrible, and I think they're the absolute worst thing for dating. I think it's the worst thing for women in dating. Right. They get so much validation and there, there's so much validation coming to them that it's like, it, there's no investment with guys. And I think it's also horrible for guys because guys, the top 10% of guys on those apps are flooded with sexual opportunity that they're not even like taking girls that seriously. They're just, eh, whatever. Like I'll respond maybe. And so what happens is people who are maybe not in the top percent of women and men, or maybe in the top 20, they're waiting to meet other people because they're waiting for the top, the guy who's in the top 10%. Right. So everyone's waiting for these top tier people to hang out and, and they're just flooded with abundance. It's like completely made the rich richer, so right. to speak, you know? And, right, I, right, and I think right, it's right. not good for society, but it's a reality. It's here today. Right. Yeah. We're not going to sit here and whine and complain yep. about it, how terrible it is. It is what it is. Right. Yep. But that explanation you've given, and it's just behind the screen. Like you said, all these girls are getting a whole bunch of foundation and all, and all, and all these guys is just like, you know, to, to me, it's, it's a big waste of time, but touching more on relationships here. What, what are your thoughts with a long distance relationship? Right? Yeah. Some people make it work. Some don't. Some say it's, 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 there's no such thing as a long distance yeah. relationship. Some say it is right. But what are your thoughts and yeah. experiences? Right. You've been through a lot for sure and work with a lot of people. Right. And, and look, sometimes spouses have to travel and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. Different scenarios. So yeah, they're difficult. Yeah, I'm, I'm in, my girlfriend lives in Brazil right now. She's moving here, but she lives in Brazil. It's difficult to be in a long distance relationship, but I also think there's some benefits to them too. Like it allows two separate people to really focus on themselves. And then when they come together, it's really powerful. Um, long-term, it's not good for a relationship. Long-term, right? Yeah. Long-term, it's not because you want to, I think one of the biggest problems is long-term you're on your phone all the time. Yeah. You're spending too much time on technology. You're not spending that time connected out of technology. And so um, they're difficult to do. Sometimes they can, um, they can hide a relationship that wouldn't work right. because it's, it's feast or famine where like you don't see them and then you miss them and you see them. There's so many emotions, but maybe that's not even something you could work out with long term if you were together in the same city. Right. So um, I think they're dangerous unless you really spent a lot of time with someone in person too. It's important to know is this person like it's best to be in person at the start of a relationship then maybe do some distance. But if you start a relationship at distance, you never know if you're truly compatible with the person or not. That makes sense, yeah, 100%. What about you break up with someone, right? There's there's different schools of thoughts. You break yeah. with someone, you're done, right? Mm. Or a lot of people say too, look, you never know what can happen down the road, right? Yes. Um, I've seen that happen as well. Like people was like, they dated and then they met years later and then they got married. Yes. Like this is all, you know, a whole bunch of stories, but. Sure. How do you navigate that? Like, when do you, how do you know, right, I'm gonna get back with this person, we broke up, we were together, yep. and you know, let's try this again. What, sure. What's the thought process behind that? Hmm, that one can be tricky because um, you need to make sure you've healed from them before you get back together with them, I think. And so uh, it's possible 
but it is difficult and there has to be healing done. When you say separately. healing, when you say healing, what do you mean? What exactly? I mean like moving past them. Okay. Like you have to be able to be fine being without them okay. to then be able to get back together with them or else it becomes a cycle of just continuing that. At least that's what I've seen in my own behavior. It's like when I get back together with someone too soon after breaking up, the problem hasn't been resolved. Right. When I no longer need them in my life and I'm fine being by myself and then we get back together, which has happened, then it's good. What do you think? Right. Yeah. No, I think that's 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 key. Yeah. You yeah. got You have to move back, move past the obstacles, right? The challenges, whatever. And people change too, right? It's For like sure. if you're if you're with someone that's like, okay, they're interested in improving themselves, like they move on to different things, right? I know I wasn't the same person I was a year ago or two years ago, but not everyone's like that, right? So yes. you have to see if that other person, okay, did this other person really change? Can we work through yes. this? Yes. So I think that's um, that's a key point there. Um, so going over here, right? Cause we, we've gone over a lot, man, but this is a subject, right? That, okay, it's very cliche, right? So in your experience here, if a man tells his woman, right? Or yeah, I mean, most of the time it's the man, right? It's gonna yep. be the man. He doesn't want her going out, yep. right? He doesn't want her entertaining other men or dressing a certain way. Is that considered toxic, right? Or do do women like that? Yeah. Do they not like that? Yeah. Like you know, because because you know people do this all the time, right? Sure. There, there, there's like there's this debate, right? Yes. And and you did that that reaction, right? Yeah, to, yeah. Um, the Jonah Hill. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which for me, I thought he did it in a polite way. Obviously, we don't. It's social media, right? So we're not going to see everything. For sure. But that's what he basically said, right? Yep. Like, okay, this is this, this and this. Yeah, I'm not cool with this. I'm not cool with you hanging out with guy friends. Yeah, yeah, all those things. I think deep down, women would rather have a guy like that than a guy who is the cool with everything guy. Because the cool with everything guy, like, oh, it's cool, do whatever you want, blah, blah, blah. He actually doesn't create any boundaries. So a woman doesn't inherently feel like he really loves me. So I've, I've talked to girls, girls who are my friends, when they've right. had a guy who's cool with everything and there's like, I just don't know if he really like cares. And it's not that he cares, he's just scared to show what he's really comfortable with and not, because he doesn't want to be toxic. Right. And so I think for most men, actually women like a guy like that, but it's about delivery more than like, you can't do this, like you can't do that, you're grounded if you do that. You know, it's like, it can't be the dad energy, but it's like, right. hey, I don't like, I don't want you going to Vegas with your girlfriends for a weekend. Right. Like, no, I'm not cool with you going out with your girlfriends and a bunch of guys. Like, I'm not cool with that. Right. Do you want me doing the same thing? And it depends on the relationship. Some relationships, they're gonna be fine with it. But I think it, it just comes down to the boundaries of what the guy's actually comfortable with and what she's comfortable with and to speak your truth and, and to say it. And maybe she's not the girl for you if she wants to go do that. Yeah, that's true. It's all, it's all how you, like you said, your delivery. Yep your boundaries and your perspective. Mm, love that. And, and women like that, like you said, you know, some yes. women do want that because if, if they really truly respect the guy and that's the guy for them, then why wouldn't they do that, right? For sure. So that, that, that's controversial, right, nowadays. Um, so as someone, right, we're in the presence here of a legend because we've all done over, your girlfriend's not gonna like I say this, yeah, right? No, no. <laughs> but you've done over 2,000 cold approaches. Yeah. So that, the congratulations. Oh, thanks, thanks. Do I get a medal for courage. that? Yeah. That's courage, man. <laughs> that should be up there, man. You, you, you're close to breaking a, a world yeah. record here, right? <laughs> if you could summarize, and, I, and, th and that's good, right? Because yeah. people are now behind your screens. Oh, yeah, dating yeah, yeah, apps yeah. and this and that. So it's like, you need courage in life. Yeah. Like courage, is, courage will take you everywhere. Like for forget sure. everything else. Like I think it just boils down to that, right? Courage. But if you could summarize what women actually respond to mm. on a cold approach, right? Because people yep. overthink it and this and that, I have to do this. Yep. But what, what do they respond to? What's effective? Uh, the most important thing is vocal tonality. So it's like um, a lot of guys, when they show up on a cold approach, it's like, hey, um, uh, sorry to disturb you. Um, <laughs> I, I, I thought you were pretty. Yeah. It's like, hey, I'm Alan, what's your name? Nice to meet you. It's like downward tonality. It's a bit more like, almost like a bit more authority, but playful. Right. Like, hey, what's your name? I'm Alan. And right. so tonality is the start. And then it's, it's what we talked about earlier, which is calming into the body. Because most guys, when they're doing a cold approach, there's so much like, there's nerves. And so they're like, 
asking her a million <laughs> questions a minute. They go into interview mode. A yeah. lot of guys go into interview mode. It's like, oh, cool. So what do you do? Oh, cool. So you live here? You live in the city? Oh, nice, nice, nice. What do you like to do for fun? And it's just like, he's just going rather than sitting back into like presence of like, cool. So what do you like to do for fun? Right. Oh, uh, it's amazing. And so it's like, it's all energy. It's tonality. It's eye contact and it's speed of voice. Those three things, it's just like sales, right? Right, it's just like sales. When you're on the phone. Um, and those are really the key things and making clear what this is. Like right. I'm on the, f I'm talking to you, not because I want to know where the closest Starbucks is. I'm talking to you because I have a desire to get to know you and probably fuck you. Like that's the energy. I'm not going to say that, but that's right. the energy right, right. she wants to feel like I'm a lion coming across the savanna wanting to take you. And she's like, holy fuck, this guy has something different about him. Right. So it's that energy that a guy comes with is the tonality, the speed of speaking, the eye contact, and the intentionality. I'm not here to be your bestie. I'm not right. here to go get fucking lattes with you. Yeah. Like I'm here because I'm It interested. wasn't by accident. No. Yeah. yeah. This isn't like by chance, by coincidence. Yes. Yeah. I'm not asking you for the time. Right. I'm here because I want to take you out. And when women feel that, even if it's a guy who's shorter, or even if it's a guy who's less good looking than her, when they feel that energy, it stands out to them. And it's like, oh, okay, who's this guy? Yeah. A hundred percent, yeah. And most guys won't, won't do 2,000 cold approaches. Yes. Or even 50. Yes. Because of fear, right? But, but I'm sure on those 2,000, not everything went the way you wanted it to go, right? Oh my gosh, bro. So <laughs> horrible. So, so what, what, what happens? Like, right? Yeah. What, what, what's on the other side of that, right? Yeah. You, you said, okay, you, you went in, your game plan, it went well. What happens if it doesn't? What, yeah. no, not, right? Yeah, nothing. Yeah, like, you, you, your ego gets hit, but you walk away and then you learn, you, you take something from it. One of the yeah. things I say after every, or I did after every cold approach, I don't do them as much now was like who the fuck has the balls to do that it's reinforcing that it, i'm not here for the win i'm here for the action and the win is a byproduct of the action right i'm not here just to get the girl's number or to go on a date i'm here to just do the action if i did the action it's a one or zero it's binary if i did right. the action i won Exactly. So I can walk up and I start to talk to the girl and she's like, you're creepy and ugly. Get away from me, which has happened a lot. Right. Ew, you're short. Get away from me. It's like, okay. who the fuck would have the balls to do that? Yeah. Me. I won. I already did won. did it for you. Yes. You did it for you, you know? It's all about the action, the action of courage. It's not about the girl. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So we're here in Colombia, right? Beautiful city. It's got so many amazing things. Yes. But then there's this dark side, okay? That we know about because we're here. And unfortunately, guys know about because they come and experience it. So a lot of guys come here yep. and want to hook up with girls. I'm not talking about normal girls here. Normal girls, right? We've seen a lot of them get in trouble, mm -hmm. drug, robbed, killed. I mean, all sorts of things, right? Why do, why do these guys insist on doing this? Mm. I think they're in scarcity. Like our biological need is for connection and sex. And right now, probably those guys who are coming down for those reasons, they're not getting that in a, in a Western country or they're in a relationship and they're not getting that because they don't know how to embody what we've been talking about. And so it's just a, it's a biological need. And so this is a place where cost effectively, they can get that. So they come here for that. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's the sad truth. I mean, do you, do these guys come here looking for that? Do you feel sorry for these guys? Yeah. I mean, who's to blame, right? Yeah. Because I mean, look, I'm not hating on anyone and you know, guys do go through that stuff and that, yeah. that must be challenging. I can't say because I've never gone through for that, sure. right? But then they, they want to victimize, they're the victim, right? They're the yeah, victim. Yeah. They want to victimize themselves. All oh, these girls and this and that. Is it their fault? Is it the girl's fault? Yeah. They, they come looking for it. Should we feel sorry for them? Like, you yeah. know, what, what? Great question. I, I love that. I think it's, it's just a, I think everything in the, in the universe and everything in the world is energy. And I think it's just a frequency match. Like these guys are at a certain frequency of like prostitutes and cocaine. Right. The frequency of girl that a guy like that meets is a girl who's like, I'm here to take advantage of him. Like he's here to take advantage of her. And so it's actually just a perfect pairing. Right. And so the guys who get taken advantage of, that's what they're here for. Right. They're here to 
take advantage. So they get taken advantage of. And life goes one of two ways, either time. And so I think from an energetic frequency, they're just a frequency match. Yeah. That's why they found each other. That's that's a hundred percent, man. That's that's a super accurate way to describe it. But then these women, right? Because women who do nowadays, it's uh, there's a trend, right? I, I would say. But why do women sleep with guys for money, right? Why do they yeah. engage in the prostitution? I mean, there could be a whole bunch of reasons, yeah. right? They do the OnlyFans. There's all these yeah, yeah. things that are, you know, just for money, right? Yes. This is what. Well, well, What's going on through the head? Yeah. I think there's just a lack of family values. At the end of the day, like most women back in the day, they would feel guilty doing this because of how it would make their family look. Like how their dad would treat them. Like when you meet a woman who's from a good family, she's like, I would never do that because my dad would kill me. Like that's the energy of a strong man. A strong man sets a precedent and a boundary in a family that's so strong that a girl would never ever feel like she could even do something like that. And like, I've even joked with my girlfriend, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you can do OnlyFans, you know, when she was looking for a job and she's like, my dad would kill, like, and it was like death in her eyes. My dad would kill me right. if I ever did anything like that. And that's a strong man. And, and what's happening right now is everything in society that we see is wrong. is just a reflection of men not being in their power because no, no husband, is going to let his no no father is going to let his daughter do something like that and and daughters who are mainly doing that are from probably from broken homes right yeah i mean it's true and you know there's statistics right if you don't have your father in your life yep. if you had some traumatic event like that i mean just the, your your likelihood of doing drugs and gangs and prostitution right things like that is they they need strong men right yes. which comes to my next thing right because Look, nowadays it's like guys in general, right? Because we're, there's a lot of pressure on men, right? But a lot of guys nowadays, it seems like oh, being overweight is the norm. Yes. Obese and, you know, playing video games and yes. vaping and just social media. And, you know, we were just having lunch, right? And it was so nice to have a home cooked meal. Yes. But they, they're not doing that. They're on Uber Eats and all this yes. stuff, right? And these are things that you look from now to and it's like, wow, like it's, it's, it's kind of, uh, sad, right? You know, sure. these values that we're losing, man. But what, sure. what the fuck happened to these guys? Why yes. watching porn, doing, yep. doing all this degrading things, right? I have my theory, but I yeah. want to know your theory. Yeah. Right? Hmm. I think it goes back to people running from difficult things. I think it, there's a, there's a certain addiction to doing hard things and getting a reward for it. And if no one's ever experienced that, it's just easier to turn to Uber Eats and to porn and to, to weed. But um, yeah, I haven't thought about that one too much. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, man, I mean, for me personally, what I think is that, you know, they don't have God first and foremost, yes. right? Because I think God is so important that it's like you want to, you're, for me, it's like, okay, when I think of God, I'm here to serve him. Yes. So I can't be out here doing degrading things that, so to say, go against, I know what, what God was here to do. And then secondly, it's like you said, you know, people aren't used to doing hard things. Yes. But when you've had that discipline, when you've built that in, it's like, this is, I, I can't do this. Sure. Like I can't, I can't, I have to honor myself. Yes. Like I, I need to look in my mirror and say, okay, this is someone, I respect the person I am. Like I like who I am. But I guess people don't hold themselves to that standard nowadays. And they don't, they're just like, there's no loyalty to oneself, yes. loyalty to God. But, you know, I, I hope, I, I hope God, you know, can, can, can enlighten us more in society nowadays, sure. man, because um, it's so hard to find quality people, right? Yes. That's why we don't just, you know, talk to anyone, right? Because yes. you go out in the street and it's like, okay, I'm reminded, like I told you, when I go out here and I see, I see the guy on the corner, the family, and yes. it's like they're 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 digging for money, you know, they're asking for money and for selling candies and things like that. I'm reminded, I'm like, I have an opportunity. Yes, you know, God has blessed me. Like, I have my health for me, I have my skills, for and sure. I've been through the hard things, so I can't can't go out and you know, I have to set an example, right? Sure. And these people have they have nobody to set an example for mm -hmm. them, and they may not have. The last important thing, they might not have an example in their life, right? So wow. that's why someone like you, 
yeah. it's so powerful in the marketplace. Yeah. yeah. With great power comes great responsibility. You were talking about something there just so like yeah. of, I have those skills. So to give that, I think that's so key. Absolutely. Being a man of impact. Absolutely, man. But um, going back to that, because I've, I've had women, right? Just normal women, right? Mm -hmm. Friends that I know out here, right? And they tell me, it's like, look, they'll be out of the club. Let's say, you know, five, 10 beautiful women, right? They just go out, it's a girls night out, right? Yeah. And they just want to have a good time. They're not really looking to entertain. But then they tell me, you know, guys will come, you know, let's, it's mainly the guys that come from outside, right? That's what they tell me, right? Yeah. They, they don't even really like going out that much anymore. Yeah. Because then it's like, oh yeah, the waiter come up, oh yeah, these guys are sending you these bottles. Mm -hmm. And it's bottle after bottle after bottle. It's yeah. a real story, right? Yeah. And you know, the girls are gonna they're gonna take the bottle, right? For sure. For sure. <laughs> I mean they're not gonna turn it down, yeah. right? It's like, okay, thank you. And then the guys, but they won't be respected to them. You know, they'll be respectful and be like, hey, look, you know, we're just hanging out, it's a ladies' night, it might be one of their birthdays or whatever. But then these guys keep insisting, right? Mm. They like they want to buy them with money, with gifts. And then they told me, okay, they sent us all these bottles. The club was over, right? And then these guys like, oh yeah, we're gonna order some food for you guys. <laughs> and so like it's almost absurd, man. Like yes, these guys first of all need your coaching. I hope, yes. <laughs> I hope they're send watching. Send in the link. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they're watching, but what's going on with these guys then, yeah. man? Because it's, it's not like it's a little bit of, of you know, select few. Yes. It's so many. Yes. I feel, I feel like that's just a lack of, lack of confidence, like in knowing your worth, because if you're, if you're really man of high integrity and value, you don't need to feel like you need to buy your way into, into her life. And you can just walk up and be cool and chat with her and make interesting conversations. So I think at the core, it's probably that. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's fear. It's yeah. lack of courage. It's lack of courage to go speak with her. So you send her things you send, and you try you and send. buy her things and try and buy her bottle service and drinks and all that. And a guy like that is really, really respected and treated well by a woman. Yeah, absolutely, man. They, they need to get hooked up on your coaching. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the difference, right? In a relationship between setting boundaries and being insecure, mm. right? What What are those things? Because... I think as men, we all have boundaries yes. and even women too, right? Yes. Say, hey, look, but then they want to use, hey, you're being insecure. Yes. You're being toxic. Yes. Uh, you don't trust me. You're controlling. You're controlling. Yeah. yeah, that's a big one, yeah. right? So what, what is that line there between setting boundaries and being insecure? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I know, um, if I know a hard and fast rule for it, but I think, um, I think ultimately the setting boundaries is like, coming down to something that my girlfriend and I have in our relationship is I say like, is this going to be something that you want to do at our family barbecue? So for example, like at one point she would be friends with a guy that she had used to choose to see romantically. Right. And I said, no, I'm not cool with it. Well, why not? We've been friends for a couple of years. And I said, are you going to invite him one day to our barbecue with our friends and our family and our kids? Is he that close of a friend? She's like, no, that, you know, I'm, I'm not. Okay, well then no. Like, we're, we're focused on what's happening five years from now, 10 years from now, not now. And if, and if we have the same mindset in the relationship, it, it creates the boundary for a lot of other things. Like me going out with the guys and getting bottle service at La Chula and hanging <laughs> out without my girl, yeah. is that setting me up for success five or 10 years down the road with my girl? It's not. Because I know it's full of temptation. It's full of girls. Everyone's dancing. There's a lot of alcohol, whatever else. So I think the boundaries come where they're not, it's not being controlling when you just look at the greater scale of the relationship. Is this helping us long term or not? Maybe. I think that's key. Yeah, yeah. no, I think that's, that's spot on. Mm. And it's that perspective, that analogy yep. that where maybe she didn't understand that. If was like, no, I just don't want him. You'd be like, no, I just don't want you to be his friend. Yes. And just walk away where she's like, she's not going to understand it, but the way, like you said, your delivery, yes. right? How you, because you, you are a master of communication, right? Mm -hmm. You understand and communication is not just verbal, yep. but it's how you feel, how you say things, how you deliver yep. things. And so I'm pretty sure she understood yep. just based off that. Cause I understood for sure. Like that made sense to me. Yeah. Are there roots to this? Yeah. Are there roots to this? Like your girl's trip to Miami. Are you going to be doing that when you have kids? 
no, I'm not going to be at the club in Miami when I, oh, okay, well, like, why, why are we doing that now? You know, right. there's, there's, there's power in that, I believe. A hundred percent, man. A hundred percent. And people want to always blame it. You're being insecure. You're, you're controlling people, right? Yeah. <clears throat> And I think there is a, uh, I'll, I'll touch on that real quick. I think there's actually, it's important to have an element of insecurity in your relationship. Because there's this belief today in relationship that like, you should be completely fine being on your own and they should be completely fine being on your own. I don't believe that. I believe like a real relationship where like I'm, you totally have my heart and I totally have yours. I'm going to be insecure. There's going to naturally be elements of insecurity there actually for that relationship to really be healthy because if it doesn't exist, it's not deep enough. Right. It's not real enough. It's not raw enough. And so I think insecurity is actually a pretty important factor, but it's when it, it overtakes the relationship that it's not good. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. That makes sense. Cause I was reading a book. I forgot what book, but it was based on relationship and it was like, it's not about fine. It's not about not having attachment. It's about like finding that person that you can count on unconditionally. Yes. Right? Where it's like, you're not afraid to give it your all, right? To devote yourself. That's not that's not what it's about, right? It's yeah. not about like, hey, I'm, I'm fine. Like you said, I'm fine being alone or we can both be alone. It's not about that. That's And that's exactly true. Awesome. Exactly what we say. So who's the real prize? The man or the <laughs> woman? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Um, be honest. A very well-developed man um, who's done the hard work, he's, he's the most rare and unique prize for, for a woman. Um, but there are also women who have done a lot of their own work, who show up so powerfully in a feminine way, who have great humor, who know how to support, who know how to build a man up, who are also prizes too. But I'd say in general, because men's selection criteria is less, like men can be happy with a girl who's beautiful and loving where women need so many more things that a man, if he's climbed that ladder, he's emotionally connected, he's successful, he's well-spoken, he's all these things. He's going to be the bigger prize because he's more rare. He's more rare for in the world. Than yeah, I women. agree. Yep. I agree a hundred percent with that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue with you there. So how, what, what are some signs if you're in a relationship, right? Because you've worked with a lot of coaching clients, like you're in the wrong relationship. Mm, so yeah. give me three, right? Because yeah. there could be so many. Or what do you say? Three, three signs, man. It's just, it's not meant to be. And sometimes it's hard, right? I'm yeah, sure you yeah. work with guys and it's just like the familiarity and yes. the attachment. And we did this and we've been together for X amount of years. I've seen it. Right? Yes. I've, I've seen it. And for then sure. it's like, they just, they can't give it up, right? Yeah, they're scared. They're scared to be alone. Yeah. They're scared to, to be single. They're scared if they're going to find better or not. Um, at the core, I think uh, if you were coming from abundance and feeling good about yourself, would you still be with her? Like if you had other options, would you still be with her? That's important to know because a lot of guys, if they had other options, like really good options, they wouldn't be with her. And they need to know that there has to be a unique thing that has you there with mm -hmm. her. That's number one. That's number one. If you had other options, would you still be with yes. her? Yes. Even if there were better options yes. or, or any other. More attractive, yeah. whatever else, yeah. better options. Yeah, Cause there has one. to be an intangible, like there's an intangible. There's a reason I'm with this girl outside of her looks, outside of the great sex we have. It's like, what is it? What is that other thing that's there? And so I think a guy needs to know that. And, and the next thing is, if you guys don't have the same long-term plans, if you don't goals. have the same long-term vision. Hashtag goals. Yes, exactly. Hashtag goals. I love that. <laughs> yes, completely. If you don't have the same long-term vision, why are you there? Right. And then the third one is, um, if she's not willing to be led, I find for men, if she's not willing to be led, if she has to control the relationship, probably not the right woman. She needs to find a, she needs to have her space to be alone and then find a man who's a bit stronger to put her in her place. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Oh man, wrapping up here, man. This has been amazing. I know a lot of people watching and to get value here, man. You spoke the truth. Cool. Who are some of your mentors, right? Because people, you just don't learn this on yourself. Like for, for me, I can say I learned something from you on yep. that 
Say that again, the AR? Yeah, the RAS, reticular activation system. Is your that role. like a theory? Is that like a, is that is that like something you learned somewhere, yeah. right? Who were some of your mentors, yeah. right? Who was someone that made a huge impact on your life, right? Because I'm sure there was strong men in your yes. life that guided you For right, sure. to build build you up, help you build you up the person you are today. Yeah. I got really lucky. Um, when I was in seventh, uh, in eighth grade, I was a wrestler, so I was a wrestler in high school and college. And um, my wrestling coach, when I was in eighth grade, it was just some random middle school. He was like a 35, 36 year old guy, badass, jacked, like good shape. And he had just sold a company for over uh, $3 billion, I believe. Wow. And so when I saw him, it was the first time I'd ever seen a man who was financially successful, calm mind, jacked body, great relationship with his wife, great relationship with his kids, and was always going and doing adventurous things. And right. it was the first time in my life that I saw a man that really had all five pillars. And I remember it changed my perception, even in eighth grade, I said, wow, like, normally I thought the guy who was rich was always fat. Right. Or I thought the guy who got girls and had a good body was always broke. It was right. the first time I'd seen a guy who embodied all five pillars. So that was a transformative mentor for me, still a mentor to me, that still a mentor for me to this day. Right. Um, he was a big one. And then, um, man, a lot of, I, I like to read a lot of older literature, right. like, um, Ralph Waldo Emerson has right. been a really big inspiration for me. Alexander the great. Right. I think studying conquerors is one of the most important things a man can do Yeah. because if you study Jeff Bezos or some of these other people, they built companies, but who are the guys who had armies that were willing to die for them? Right. Napoleon right. Bonaparte, Alexander the great Genghis Khan, these type of guys, I think, are really important to study, and they've they've really helped guide my thinking. Now, that's a unique spin. I hadn't, yeah. I hadn't heard of those, you know, list yeah. going and seeing those war stories, right? Yeah. Seeing how they recruited them, like you said. I mean, they're willing to die for these people, man. What last advice here would you, would you give to the men watching, right? They might be looking to become a better version of themselves, yep. or they might be sad, or they might be lonely, or they might, they might be lost, man. Yep. It might be, you know, on the point of suicide. Yes. Right. What What advice would you give these people watching that can help improve them? Yeah. The biggest thing is um, courage. Let courage be your compass. Courage. Yeah. That what you're scared to do, go do. And the, the guys who are going through the hardest time in life are the guys who are scared to do the thing they know they're supposed to do because they're trying to do it some later time when they're safer. And so if they can actually follow courage and let that be the compass, their whole life will change. And so life for a man is are you willing to step into greater and greater courage and the more you do the more impact the more gold the more success the more women you receive so i think it's courage absolutely courage that word embody yes. it yes embrace it and live it yes live, live with courage live with courage man it's yeah. been amazing alan yeah. where can people connect with you where can they find you man yeah leave them your website leave them your cool. instagram Cool. Yeah, uh, Bess is at Instagram, Coach Alan Howard, A L A N H O W A R D. And then my website, the path.com, or on YouTube at Coach Alan Howard as well. Alan, thank you so much, Thanks, bro. brother. It's Appreciate been a pleasure, it. man. Yeah. You guys take care until the next time. Real estate, sales, marketing, full circle conversations with Andres Olaya.